Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's performance on the Millennium Stage. We are thankful for our partnership with the DC Jazz Festival. Special thanks to Willa Jenkins and Sonny Sumter for working closely with the Kennedy Center and presenting jazz talent for our Millennium Stage. Tonight, we are excited to be a part of Chris Fund's album de debut release entitled Corner Store. Chris and Corner Store, the band, will be selling CDs and signing autographs at their merchandise table near the stanchions following tonight's presentation. And now, please welcome to the stage, Chris Fun and Corner Store. deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Ow! The Corner Store. On the corner of bebop and hip hop, hard rock and hard knocks, where the blues is the visceral response to everything. And a boom box is the soundtrack for a city block, where the story of love and hate is in disguise behind the eyes of a Gemini. Here in West Baltimore, this ain't just a store. It's a metaphor for our lives. They give us just enough to get by, controlling our minds with false narratives while the lullaby of the ghetto bird plays throughout the sky. But there's always hope in a system that's broke, a church around the corner, or when the love of your life becomes your wife, or when the craft that your father taught you before you could speak keeps you from being out in the street. But you see, it always adds up in the end. That's the mathematics of life, or should I say, the arithmetic of it all. So take a look around. We ain't got what you need, but we know we got what you want. Maybe you'll find what it is exactly that you're looking for. Maybe you already have it and forgot that you did. That memory, that wish, that thing that represents so much of who you are. Never forget it. It's not what you do today, but what you do the day after. Thank you for shopping with us. Welcome to the corner store.
doing tonight it's so good to see y'all in this rain because I thought this place was gonna be empty matter of fact I almost stayed in the house but um I gotta keep my lights on so uh yeah I, I put an album out I kind of I never thought I'd do this but uh, here I am <laughs> uh, that first tune was called visceral and uh, it's kind of funny because that was like one of the first tunes I wrote for this uh, album. And uh, when I wrote, when I wanted to make this project, I wanted to like, you know, leave all my like, I, I used to write tunes that I hated because I thought they were like too complex, even though that sounded a little complex. But anyway, I had this crazy bass line and I was stuck on the melody and I just was like, I'm going to just play the blues over top of this. And uh, because the blues is the first thing my dad ever taught me on this instrument. It's that guy right there. And um, so basically, I just wanted to go back to, you know, the roots. And all this music started pouring out. So that's how all this happened. Um, so you just heard the amazing John Lee on guitar. This guy is nuts. He's, he's literally nuts on the guitar. And to my left, uh, John Lampkin III on drums. He's nuts, too, but in a different kind of way. Uh, I'm uh, Chris Fun, and we are The Corner Store. So uh, I want to bring up uh, a friend of mine, my man, Mr. Herbert Scott on alto saxophone. He's going to uh, bless us for a couple tunes. I've known this guy since he was like a little, a little baby pit bull. He used to come and hang out at all the jazz places. Now he's a full-grown pit bull, and he's uh, uh, president of the Capitol Hill Jazz Foundation. So he's doing a lot of great things for DC Jazz, so uh, definitely check him out. So this next tune uh, is Gemini season. Is it any Geminis in the house? Oh, y'all deep tonight. So many. Y'all crazy. Um, <laughs> so they say that, that Geminis have two sides. I, I don't I don't really, uh, you too? Uh, my uncle and my cousin are Gemini. And this song's about my brother. Oh man, this is deep. Anyway, so they say that uh, Geminis have two sides, and I don't really believe in that Zodiac stuff, but my brother is the only person who I can think of that I've hated the most in my life and loved the most. So there must be something to it. So. I wanted to put a song for him, and I couldn't put it in words how it is that, like, you know, growing up in the 80s and, like, wanting to kill each other and fighting over Atari games and baseball cards. And, but then you realize, this is pretty deep with the music, then you realize <laughs> that the person you're fighting has the same blood as you. And then you see, you see how important they are to you because I learned so much in life from following my brother and all his successes and his failures. I learned what to do and what not to do. So if you're watching, Kyle, I love you. This song is about him. It's entitled uh, Gemini. Hope you enjoy it.
Yeah, so that was uh, Atari Games, the 80s, and Fights to the Death and Love, all in that song right there. So um, I grew up uh, in a funny little block in West Baltimore, about a block up from this picture. And um, I was thinking back how amazing uh, the people who lived there uh, were. And um, one of the most amazing people was this guy named Jimmy who lived about five blocks up. And he was like a DJ. My mom used to call them the Yo Boys. Um, he had a little Kango on, Adidas sweatsuit. Imagine LL Cool J, but like 200 pounds heavier. And um, I remember hearing, hearing this boom bap from inside the house one morning. Might have been like seven years old or something. And I go outside, and he has this huge radio on his, on his uh, front stoop, is what we call it in Baltimore, your front stoop, steps in front of the house, translation. And um, I remember being like, wow, that's so loud. But I, I'd never heard anything like it. And, and I, I remember running in the house and turning on our radio, thinking that our radio could do the same thing, but no. Um, my dad only had, like, you know, Duke Ellington Records, Freddie Hubbard, Gold Train, couldn't find that, and my mom had like the Earth, Wind, and Fire records. And I couldn't find the hip hop. You know, jazz was on the radio back then, so I'm going through the radio trying to find it. Couldn't find it. So I go back out, and I'm, I just remember com being completely confused. And then it ended in euphoria, because I think I discovered hip hop for the first time. And like, um, before I ever picked up this bass uh, or trumpet, I was in love with hip hop to my dad's chagrin. But, um, this song is about that experience. It's called Boombox.
I'm tired. <clears throat> Give it up for Herb Scott, y'all. Playing all that saxophone, man. You might, might have to get that fixed now, man. Um, thank y'all for coming out. I really appreciate y'all. I'm trying to catch my breath. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, growing up in the 80s in Baltimore, uh, I like to look at a lot of the positives that came out of that. But there are also some negatives. Um, but, you know, when you live in that place, you kind of make positives out of negatives. So I remember as a child, um, there used to be this loud noise that would happen when I was at late at night sometimes, and it would sometimes be accompanied by lights. And, um, and when I realized what it was, my mom told me, I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And um, looking back, it's like, wow, we lived through that? It's crazy. But yeah, so some kids, you know, go to sleep to lullabies, you know. Shout out to Jasper out there. And Amaya out there. I know Amaya's out there, too. Some kids go to sleep to lullabies, you know, and some lullabies are about birds. Some birds have propellers. And, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, making positives out of negatives. So, you know, it's funny um, what you find yourself falling asleep to growing up in the 80s in Baltimore during the, uh, the war on drugs. <laughs> so this song is a lullaby, a different kind of lullaby. It's entitled Ghetto Bird.
Um, man, time's flying when you release a record. I'm looking at the clock. Um, so um, originally I had this um, shout out to DC Jazz Festival here because they're responsible for me being here. And because uh, I don't know how else I'd be on the stage. But I um, uh, also have CDs for sale. Did I mention that? Yeah. So I released a CD today and it's for sale back there. And it's only $10. Yeah, deals, deals. So, you know, after the show, we'll sign it. If you buy it, I'll, I'll wash a car, whatever you need. Just please buy one of those CDs if, if, if you could. And yeah, two for 20, right, 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 deals. I'm all about deals. Um, so um, it's funny, because this gig was supposed to be on Saturday, but because of some confusion, it got moved to Monday. And, oh, well, okay. Amen. Amen. You know, the church portion of this show is coming up soon. So, but um, it's funny. Um, I, I didn't realize it, but today is Juneteenth, which is uh, just very interesting. And uh, I just want to um, play this next tune really quick. Um, I hope you don't think this is a stretch, but um, I happened to one of the songs I, I, I composed was actually picked up by um, uh, Hennessy for a documentary, a movie on Hennessy. And before you draw stereotypes, um, Hennessy, you know, you see rappers with cognac and Hennessy all the time, like Nas is the spokesperson. You're probably thinking like, of course, the corner store song about Hennessy, this makes sense. But, um, but no, honestly, Hennessy uh, was, was very key to the uh, civil rights movement, which, is, which I didn't even know until the movie, I watched the movie. And basically, uh, I'll try to keep this short. Um, basically, uh, you know, um, back in the, during the World Wars, one and two, black soldiers would be stationed in like in southwestern France. And, and, uh, and they were enamored with how the French treated them. They were treated better than over there. So they brought back, actually, the trend of, of uh, drinking cognac and mixing it. They brought it back to the States. And um, unlike, unlike a lot of luxury brands, when they see black people <laughs> buying their product, they kind of run from it, but Hennessy kind of embraced it. And it was basically like one of the first luxury brands to feature uh, uh, African Americans in their advertisements. And uh, so way back then, like Josephine Baker, uh, even Benjamin Banneker were actually spokesmen and women and, uh, for Hennessy, if you can believe that. So the connection runs way, way, way back. So it's not just like, Pastor Cavassier, it's, you know. <laughs> so so um, amazingly, uh, the documentary, which is called An Unexpected History, uh, shout out to Lou Ellen Smith, a great filmmaker. He had the music of one of my employers, Christian Scott's music, all over the movie. And uh, one of the songs I composed, he, he really liked and wanted it in the movie. And, uh, uh, we'll play it really quick now because I'm running out of time. So this, t this is entitled uh, Who They Wish I Was or Wish. Thank you. 
who they wish I was into uh, Lift Every. So uh, now we come to the praise and worship portion of the show. I'd like to bring up two of my close musical friends here. Um, I grew up in a Presbyterian church, Madison Avenue. Presbyterian, shout out to Madison Avenue. And uh, most musicians get their first musical, black musical experience in the church. I had a lovely church, but um, we didn't have no drums. So the music was kind of, it was great. Good, good, good. But I didn't really, you know, I didn't get it, get it, get it. But later on, I used to play every Thursday at a place called Cafe Nima with two of my devout beacons of light to the left and right of me. These religious men here have been my beacons of light. They've been my reverend since way back when. <laughs> yeah, I don't even get that joke. Um, but uh, we would play every Thursday at Cafe Nima. And uh, I, I probably learned the most from, from these guys next to my dad playing every Thursday and getting that experience. From them. So I wrote this tune for them. It's entitled Thursday Night Prayer Meeting. And if you feel the spirit, soul clap on the brakes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, the choir is pulling up the hymnals right now. You go.
Jackson on piano, Quincy Phillips on drums, John Lee on guitar, John Lapkin on drums. I'm Chris Fun, Herb Scott on the saxophone. We are the corner store. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for shopping with us. Please buy a CD in the back so I can keep my lights on. Thank you guys so much. Cornerstoremusic.com. Check me out, yo.